morning, everybody. This is Joyce Graff. I'm one of the teachers at the Senior Center, and we're going to talk today about Stitch and Flip, which is a, an interesting kind of um, easy pattern to do. And this is the pattern. It looks a little like a bow tie or something like that. And um, I got these uh, pictures off of a... Here it is. I got got these pictures off of a um, blog from patsloan.com. Um, but I thought it, it's a nice, easy pattern to do. So it needs just one piece down the middle, a regular, just a rectangle. And then you make two rectangles of the background fabric and you add these triangles. And so we're going to talk about how she added the triangles today. It's a pattern called Shea Claire. So I thought in honor of our Claire. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Shea is a French word that means in the home of. So Shea Claire is at Claire's house, basically. <laughs> and um, Maison. So, I'm sorry? Claire's Maison. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Claire's Maison. Okay, so um, a pad has chosen different fabrics. These are from Benertex fabrics, and some of them are her own designs. You can see Pat Sloan on this design. So um, a lot of very pretty fabrics that we're going to use to make these. So you need a background fabric to pull everything together. And that's true for a lot of scrappy quilts, things that you can make with a small amount of fabric. Like the bow tie is a small amount of fabric. So you could do that with um, some scraps that are hanging around. But you, weigh, you pull it all together by having the same background fabric in every square. Wow. So here she's cut the pieces. So these are the rectangles for the middle and the squares for the ends. And this pattern is free off the internet. I have the, the URL for it coming up in a later slide. And here are your rectangles for the side pieces of the, of the background fabric. And what she's done is taken one of these squares and drawn a pencil line on the back of it so that you have the exact diagonal that you can follow with your hand or your machine. And then we're going to sew with the machine right next to that um, diagonal line. So we put the squares on top of the background rectangle and we're adding them like this. So you're drawing a diagonal line and then we're going to flip this inner side over to, to the corner. Very similar to what you've been doing for the paper piecing. It, you're essentially using this square to create a triangle. And one of the things she said, you're going to draw that line. One of the things she said is that uh, she has learned to work just on the inside of that line. So the part that's going to be folded over, this is going to be inside the fold. And we're going to stay just a little bit inside of that line. The other tip is when, you, when you're doing something like this, you should start here from the inside of the and not start at the point because sometimes you know when you start at the point it'll curl up underneath the presser foot so if you start down here you're less likely to do that and she's just inside it maybe an eighth of an inch just a tiny bit inside that line so that now when she folds it over you have plenty of room and you've got good coverage here on the end. Okay, so we folded it over. And she recommends leaving this trying this hole. So now you have three thicknesses of fabric actually under here. I would normally trim that seam. But um, if you don't want to, you don't have to. It does make it a little bit heavier. So you'll decide whether you want the thickness or not, but she feels it stabilizes it to leave that in place. 
So now we have the triangles <laughs> that we added to the side pieces, and we're going to put it together like a bow tie. Wow, that's cool. And there you've got four of them. And you can also do things like make a table runner. And she's mixed it up with a couple of full squares of the background fabric just to make it a little more interesting. So it's not quite so boxy. And alternating the way you turn them. So even though they're all the same, they're a little different and it makes for a very interesting pattern. So they're just one of the very simple patterns you can do. And this one is a little bit scrappy. So you can use up some of those scraps. And here I've put the, this is the link for the pattern. And uh, the photos are from Pat Sloan. So if you wanna go see her blog, that's where it is. The woman who designed this pattern is in Germany. And the pattern, the fabrics she used here are from Better Text, but you could use anything you want. Questions, comments? That is a good German name, Brigitte. Yeah, Brigitte Hartland. So if you want to make those match, that you wouldn't be able to work with leftover pieces. You'd have to have a big piece and match it up. That's right. So if you want them all to be the same color, you could certainly do that, but here she's used scraps, I think very effectively. No, no, what I'm saying is if you wanted the patterns, the pattern of the little tiny pieces to match, you couldn't do it with tiny pieces. They would, you know, you'd have to. Right. Especially if you're making a bed quilt, you're gonna need a, a lot of this one color, like yeah. this orange color, if everything was orange, then yeah. yes, 